Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Most of us have a neighbor or friend who hangs a few sap buckets off the maple trees in their yard this time of year. Backyard sugar making can be fun. Often it's also a lot of time and effort for not much syrup. If you're looking to take your backyard syrup making an up a notch or two, we might have just the trick for you. UVM Extension Maple Specialist Mark Isselhart has built a do-it-yourself reverse osmosis machine. Reverse osmosis removes the majority of water from the sap and leaves the sweet stuff. Mark built his rig using items found at the hardware store and by harnessing the power of the sun. Here's Mark to tell us more. So what we're looking at is a very small scale solar powered vacuum and RO system. And it's something that people who are really passionate about sugaring, but want to take their sugaring, hobby sugaring to kind of the next level, they might employ one or all of this technology. A lot of hobbyists use buckets and that technology works just as well as it always has. You put a hole in the tree, you collect the sap, you boil it down. We know from decades and decades of research that if you add vacuum to those tap holes, you'll produce more sap. Roughly the relationship is for every inch of vacuum increase, you get about 6% more sap. With all the work involved in tapping trees and collecting the sap, people who want to get more sap will, will add vacuum. So what we have is we have a very small diaphragm vacuum pump. Here we're getting about 25 inches of, of vacuum, which is extremely high, very good production. This pump is running off of a deep cycle marine battery. The battery is being charged by a single 100 watt solar panel. It's also powering a, an inverter. The pump for the RO takes AC power. And the pump is running continuously. It's constantly pulling vacuum on that tap hole, generating more sap. And that's all raw sap. Anyone who's ever boiled sap in the backyard knows there's a lot of water in sap. It takes a long time to boil and take that roughly 2% sugar all the way up to 67% sugar. It's a lot of energy. If you're boiling using wood, it's wood that you've cut and split and stacked, or it's something you purchased. A lot of people boil on turkey fryers using propane. Propane's expensive, especially when you've been boiling for eight or 10 hours. Uh, it, it really starts to get pretty expensive. So we take the raw sap from this tank, we'll run it through a very small scale RO, reverse osmosis system, and we'll eliminate half or maybe three quarters of the water before we even have to boil at all. If you added everything up, the solar panels, the pump, the six membranes, the inverter, the battery, we're around $1,000, maybe a little bit more, maybe close to 1,500 which is a lot of money. This is certainly a hobby, and some hobbies are more expensive than others, but we're also making a food, and you want to use the best materials, food grade materials, and have care and pride in what you produce, even if it's not a huge amount. Raw sap is coming out of this 35-gallon sap tank. The raw sap comes through a primary filter to take out all the bugs and impurities that might be in the system, might be floated in, and it will come out, again, as raw sap and go into the top of the first membrane. Now, once it is forced through that membrane, you're gonna have a stream of pure water and a stream of concentrated sap. That concentrated sap is gonna go into the top of the next membrane, and so on and so forth, so through each of the six membranes. At the end, depending on how high we run the pressure, we might have sap as high as uh, 10 or 15% sugar from a starting point of two and a half. The RO is up and running, and I wanna show you just how much water or permeate we're taking out compared to the sap. As you can see, the permeate is filling up very fast. So the raw sap that we're putting through the RO is at 1.7% sugar. And that's a little low, but typical for the earlier part of the season. At that sugar concentration, boiling raw sap, it would take 53 gallons to make one gallon of syrup. We've got it going through the RO, it's tuned well, we're getting 6.5% sugar coming out. At that rate of sugar concentration, it only takes 13 gallons to make one gallon of syrup. So a huge energy savings, fuel savings, and time savings. Mark shared with us that he didn't come up with his design on his own. A lot of backyard sugar makers have built similar rigs. As with most do-it-yourself projects, Mark suggests searching the internet for inspiration and then adding your own touch. Glenn Goodrich was once a backyard sugar maker. 
Today, he runs one of the largest maple sugaring operations in Vermont. We caught up with Glenn not too long ago to learn about his family's sugar-making past and their plans for the future. From the outside, Goodrich's Maple Farm in Eden doesn't look like a traditional sugar house. But make no mistake, this building has one purpose and one purpose only. We boil sat. That's what we do. Uh, we take water out of sap to turn it into maple syrup. The Goodrich family began turning sap into syrup in 93, 1793. They sugared for another century and a half before calling it quits in the 1950s. By the time Glenn Goodrich and his wife Ruth returned to the old ways, they had to start from scratch. In 1979, I went into maple only knowing how to gather buckets. I had never boiled before, I hadn't done any retailing before, didn't know anything other than how to dump a sap bucket into a gathering pail and bring it to the gathering tank. That's what I knew about maple. We had no idea of turning it into a business. But it's a little bit uh, contagious or addictive. Since their start, Glenn and Ruth have built a thriving maple business. They sell and install maple equipment, ship syrup worldwide, and have become ambassadors for Vermont Maple. A couple of years ago, Green Crow Timber Company asked Glenn to consult on 6,000 acres of forest land in Eden. At the time, he didn't think it would have much to do with maple. Lots of times when a timber company owns a piece of land, they're not focusing on maple trees to produce sap. They're looking at logs. And, and so I suspected that this wasn't going to be a very suitable site for maple production. Uh, but when I studied the maps, the topo maps and aerial photographs, and then walked the property, uh, we discovered that yes, this is a very good maple site. To have a tract of land this big that can all flow to a couple of drainage sites it just doesn't happen very often. I've been installing tubing systems professionally throughout the U.S. Uh, for 30, 40 years and there just aren't many out there. So we then turned from being a consultant into being a uh, potential renter of the property. In May, Goodrich and a work crew of nine started tapping trees and running tubing. 1,532,000 feet of tubing to be exact. That's 290 miles, or about the distance from Eden to Bar Harbor, Maine. Efficiency is a big part of being successful in this business, whether it be energy efficiency or human resources efficiency. Uh, you have to really focus on efficiency to make it work. Where the efficiencies, size, and scale of this operation sugar off to is in the growing market for maple. So that's a big deal. Our demand for maple syrup is rising somewhere between 5 and 8% per year, and that we need to increase the production to match that demand. So there's money in maple? Ah, uh, yeah, there's a lot of money in it. We just try to keep a little of it. <laughs> Mark Isselhart, maple specialist with the University of Vermont Extension, says the current growth in maple syrup production is due to expanding markets and consumer interest in this one-of-a-kind product. It's a sweetener. Fundamentally, that's what maple is, it's a sweetener. There are lots of other sweeteners that are less expensive, but maple has lots of things going for it. Very simple uh, ingredient list. You're just boiling sap down. It has a unique blend of minerals that aren't found in other, other sweeteners. And it has the story of, of being, you know, produced from, from trees over many, many years. So it has a lot of, uh, of attraction. And there's been work done marketing and growing the markets globally. So it's no longer just a regional product. It's actually being sold in Asia. It's being sold in Europe. It's being sold elsewhere. And so that demand grows and there is need for more production, so people are jumping in. In his role as an educator and researcher, Isselhart focuses on making sure Vermont's maple industry is sustainable and maintains its value in the culture of Vermont. Tree health is still critical. I mean, you're talking about tapping trees over the long term. So you have to do it in a responsible way, a sustainable way that 
maintains tree health as well as providing for new generations of maple trees to be growing underneath. There's only so many places in the U.S. that have the density of tappable trees, the climate that is suitable for ideal sap flow, and a workforce and a tradition of producing it and the know-how. And Vermont has all three. While the look of Goodrich's Maple Farm differs from the traditional imagery of maple sugaring, the quality of the product remains constant. I will acknowledge that there is a, some tension between the way sugaring used to be done or the imagery of sugaring and the way it's done now. And what I think of is, are people more concerned about the product or the process? Because the process of making syrup is very different. But fundamentally, the product needs to be the same high quality that it always has been. The imagery is stuck in the 1800s, but the industry has moved on. The industry has, has adapted. For Glenn Goodrich, the more things about sugaring change, the more sugaring stays the same. I had two old fellows in here yesterday, and they said, oh, gee, back when we did it, we used buckets and it was hard. And I said, well, it's still very hard. We just plan to do more trees per man now than we ever have done before. It's, it's like driving a car. If you started and learned to drive on a 1950 Chevy, do you mind driving your new BMW? Probably not. It's going to be fun just the same. And that's the way it is in Maple. No matter how much sap flows from the trees or boils in the pans, sugaring is farming. And farming is hard work. The Goodrich family doesn't seem to mind the work. You might even say they're sweet on it. In Eden, I'm Keith Silva with Across the Fence. And that's our program for today. Thank you for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well. <laughs>